we were talking about the source library and we want to have good, clean, well-maintained, read-only copies of source code or applications or original install disks, whatever they are. Applications you develop, applications you've bought, operating system copies, whatever they are. We want to have them in a controlled environment where people aren't just grabbing them, where people can't inadvertently update the wrong thing, that it's, it's very controlled, it's very clean, they don't introduce any viruses or inadvertently um, use up licenses that they shouldn't be. So the whole purpose of the uh, source code library is so that we can maintain and enforce the integrity of our code and executables. So we can see here that we have a source library that's always clean, uh, always read-only, always reliable, and then anything that goes in production, we know that it's the same as uh, what we got out of the um, library. Even in a smaller environment, you need to have some control over what finally gets checked in by the developers. You don't want them checking in something on top of uh, what has finally been approved. You want to be able to lock it and say, okay, no more changes to this. And you want to have control over all of the um, like the, the things that you buy, like copies of Windows and copies of Office and copies of Visio and copies of other applications. You want to make sure that those are strictly controlled as well. People aren't just running in and grabbing them. So with this control copy, make sure that there is always a master copy that is read-only so that when we have new copies and we put them into production, we know that they're the same and there's no difference there. But if there is something new, then we always can compare. We've, we've got the original source. We've got something slightly modified. We, we know what the delta, the change between the two of it is, uh, the two of them are. And we can compare the two. For the software licensing, some best practices here. We need to be able to identify software licensing violations. Now, the different vendors, and especially Microsoft and Adobe, they've really done their best to crack down on software licensing violations because it's astounding how many, um, like, I've been in countries where you'd swear there was one original copy of, of Windows and like the whole rest of the country uh, for that particular industry has a, a, a pirated copy. So um, we want to make sure that we are in compliance because if we are ever out of compliance, then it's going to cost us a whole lot more in fines or whatever uh, when we have licensing violations. So the IS auditor needs to make sure that there's clear policies regarding copying or distribution of software. And it's, folks, it's not enough just to say, warning, do not copy this. You're still liable even if you provide these warnings. So, um, but make sure that there are d uh, documented policies. Make sure that all contracts are, are reviewed so that we know what the specific licensing is. I mean, I have walked into um, small computer vendors, just small shops that sell computers, and this one guy, I don't know what he thought he was getting away with, but he was basically advertising cheap computers, saying that it had Windows already installed. And this was in earlier days where you could install like a minimal version of Windows. And so he never gave away the source disk, hence he never gave away the license um, along with the computer that people would buy, but he installed the minimal version of Windows. And so then that way he could claim he was giving away Windows, but if they ever needed the source disk to expand it, there was no license. Well, he wasn't supposed to give away that minimal install. It didn't matter if it was minimal or full install. He was still installing Windows. And so he, he was in clear violation of licensing there. And he thought he could kind of get away with it by doing a minimal install. And I don't know if he expected people to come and buy the full thing from him later or what, what the deal was. But he certainly del didn't tell his customers that. So we need to make sure that, um, that it's very clear about in the software contracts or the things we purchase what licensing goes with it. Um, if you've ever dealt with licensing, you know with from the vendors you can have volume licensing, enterprise licensing, individual retail licenses, you can have subscription-based licenses, and there are even OEM licenses. Like you'll have original equipment manufacturers, they buy loads of licenses to put on their hardware and then they've got leftover copies. And so then you'll have these outlets on the internet that sell these leftover copies that that 
are, are a legitimate license, but they're meant for an OEM, so they maybe don't have all the documentation or, or um, they, they don't have the full set of all the features that would come with like a retail copy of Windows off of the shelf. You want to look at, um, compare the list of all the licensed applications with a list of everything that's been installed. You need automated tools to actually go and query. And there are plenty of automated tools that will query and get a complete inventory of software installed on everything, as well as software utilization. You might have software installed on everything, but it's actually not being used. And then review all of the software currently installed, of course, on users' machines. If these machines belong to, say, a Microsoft domain, it becomes very easy to query all of those and, and inventory their software. So the IS Auditor, when looking at performance monitoring and capacity monitoring, we want to see the monitoring plan. Is the monitoring plan, does it have goals that are in alignment with um, what the business needs? And so we want to see the program logs, the processing schedules, the job accounting, <coughs> any preventive maintenance reports. We want to look at the problem logs. What were the malfunctions? Um, what was abnormal and what did people do about it? Um, we want to look at the preventive maintenance plan. So are you um, backing up regularly? Are you defragging regularly? Are you checking the um, errors on disks regularly? We want to look at any equipment that would automatically contact its manufacturer without the organization intervening. We know very well that most commercial products that are from a big organization will be contacting the manufacturer in the background either with licensing information or trying to pull down updates. We want to look at that as well. We want to review the availability and the utilization reports so that we know that um, the scheduling is accurate or the, the usage is accurate. And um, we want to also make sure that the resources are actually able to process programs. Maybe we just we need to upgrade these things. Um, or maybe we need to make them more available or we need to uh, make them more fault tolerant. So the IS Auditor needs to look at all of these things when taking a look at performance and capacity management.